Christ the name, mystery of the gospel is Christ in me. promise of the year came, the acts of the Holy Spirit, uh, the picture that was showed to all of you, uh, Zechariah 4, 6. Can you show them the picture? Yeah, this was the picture that was showed, right? Zechariah 4, 6. Not by might, not by power, but my spirit says the Lord. When it came to depict Holy Spirit, when it came to represent Holy Spirit, what was the picture that was taken? It was the form of dove. Why did I take the form of dove? Why Bible always takes the form of dove? How many are excited to know why we represent Holy Spirit in the form of dove? Amen? Get ready for the ride into God's word and let's do the adventure. Let's go to the, the book of Genesis. So whenever we see about the dove uh, in, in the Bible, we see it was the picture and the work of the Holy Spirit. As we complete the study, you understand why we use the picture of dove. The first mention of dove in the book of Genesis, when the flood comes, I told this in the previous uh, Sunday message during the promise of the year. When the flood came, when Noah sent out raven, he sent first raven to see if the waters had receded. But raven came back because there was no waters had not yet receded, meaning there was still uh, the earth was covered full of water. The second time, Noah sent dove. This time, when Noah sent dove, the Bible says the dove returned back to Noah because. The Hebrew meaning of word Noah is rest. So dove returned back to rest. So dove is a picture of rest, meaning dove resides on rest. Understand? Dove resides on rest. I said on rest. As we continue to study, you will understand. Holy Spirit is in you, if Holy Spirit has to come upon you, you have to be in rest. The Bible says you shall labor into rest. The only one thing Apostle Paul fears, that we may not enter the rest of God. What is rest? Being disturbed, not being in full faith. Because rest is equal to highest form of faith. Highest form of faith is rest. So when you rest, that's when Holy Spirit comes upon you. Amen? Keep that aside. So dove returned back to Noah. So dove here is the picture of rest. So now let us see in the book of Leviticus. Now that is in the story of Noah and the flood. Second time Noah sends again. What happened? We, we heard that in the previous Sunday. The dove came back with an olive branch, a shoot, an olive branch, leaf in its mouth. Meaning, dove is a symbol of Holy Spirit. Why dove? I'm coming to that. Dove is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. When Holy Spirit goes and proclaims, when Holy Spirit goes and proclaims, the olive shoot that it brings is the message of the new covenant. It is the message of finished work of the cross of Calvary. The color green, emerald, is talking about the color of new covenant. It has a message. So Holy Spirit comes giving that message. Whenever you listen to anybody, you listen to law. If you're listening to condemnation, you're listening to sin consciousness, you can be sure it is not the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen? It's not the work of the Holy Spirit. It is the work of flesh. It is work of human mind. It is not the work of Holy Spirit. Because Holy Spirit will always bring that olive branch. What is olive press? Gethsemane, it represents. Jesus was crushed 
in the garden of gethsemane the redemption work began when the drop of his blood fell in on the ground in the garden of gethsemane that is the power of his blood started to fall onto the ground redeeming his people so that is what it signifies gethsemane it's a garden of olives where the olives are taken and pressed and crushed and made a juice out of it and given to you so that's what we drink holy communion the blood of jesus so when the dove comes back it comes back with the shoot root of the olive branch with a leaf a shoot in its mouth meaning talking about jesus that's what it says when helper holy spirit comes he will remind you of all things and he will lead you into all truth what is that he lead you into all truth the truth that he will lead you into is he will testify of me jesus said he will testify of Jesus Holy Spirit will always testify of Jesus what it will testify of Jesus it will show Jesus in the old testament it will show Jesus in the new testament it will show Jesus in every scripture in context every explanation it will show Jesus the purpose that he came for he lived for he died for he rose from the dead holy spirit will testify of me holy spirit does not testify of Moses holy spirit does not testify of law holy spirit does not testify of sin holy spirit testifies of jesus there is a scripture where people use for argument holy spirit will bring to your remembrance your sin understand the scripture does not say holy spirit brings to your remember your sins plural it says he brings to your remembrance of sin the sin singular that is the only thing holy spirit will convict you of the sin what is the sin holy spirit is not every day reminding you what you thought wrong you didn't pray long you didn't read your word he's not constantly he's not called the ministry of condemnation <laughs> he's called the ministry of righteousness so he's not reminding you of those things if you're remembering your past sins your past wrongs you must know it is your human mind it is your sin consciousness it's your guilty feeling that is reminding you it is not the holy spirit that is reminding you but when your conscience is reminding you 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 can listen to it need not sear your conscience listen to it go to the holy spirit you can ask for the forgiveness and then bury the matter and move on because the more your sin conscious you will continue to dwell in sin so here when i said holy spirit testifies me that means holy spirit will bring to your remembrance about jesus it is always testifying jesus it is always exalting jesus it is always reminding jesus the holy spirit testifying of you of the sin is when you don't make jesus your lord jesus not making jesus your lord is the sin the bible is talking about that is what holy spirit convicts you of when you make jesus the lord the job of the holy spirit of convicting of the sin is over now he is no longer convicting you of the sins he does not want you to be sin conscious because the more you are sun conscious you are transformed from glory to glory the so holy spirit is not reminding you of your sins so the more you look at the sun you become physically in your emotions in your actions in your thinking like the sun because in your spirit you're already like the sun so now coming to the mosaic law so this dove we saw in noah and the flood now let's see the picture of dove in leviticus in the book of leviticus when god gave uh, laws what kind of offering a person should have what uh, burnt offering is acceptable clean animals unclean animals there are so much of detailed explanation in the book of deuteronomy in the book of leviticus about clean animal and unclean animal meaning which are the clean animals that are accepted by god as burnt offering it has more 
deep meaning. It's pointing out to the nature of Jesus, the work of Jesus. It's pointing out that Jesus is pure, holy, harmless. We are not going that direction today. So the clean animals and unclean animals. So one of the clean birds that were accepted under Mosaic law were turtle doves. You can show them the book of Leviticus. Whenever they would bring birds for offering, owls, vultures were not accepted. Eagles were not accepted because the bird that preys on another bird. And there are so many specifications of clean bird and unclean bird. So this falls under the specifications that were given in the book of Deuteronomy for clean birds, that is doves. Look at the scripture. If he is not able to bring a lamb, if he's poor, if he has no greater revelation of the lamb, then he shall bring to the Lord for his trespass, which he has committed two turtle doves or two young pigeons, one as a sin offering and the other as a burnt offerings. So he's supposed to bring the turtle doves. Under Mosaic law, doves were accepted as pure, clean animals. Amen. Now, let's move further. Let's continue the adventure. When we study the book of Song of Solomon. So many scriptures. I just took only one of them. You can do your homework. In the Song of Solomon, wherever it talks about doves, it's talking about innocence, it's talking about beauty, and it talks about love. When Solomon praises his Shulamite, he praises his bride, he always expresses and compares her to dove. Look at the scripture, Song of Solomon 115. Behold, you are fair, my love. Behold, you are fair. You have dove's eyes. It talks about dove's eyes. Now understand, when it says you are fair, it's not talking about light skin. The context here of being fair is someone who is spotless, someone who is blemishless, someone who is pure, someone who is holy. So beautiful, right? So the entire book of Song of Solomon, we see it's talking about dove's eyes, beautiful as dove. It's a picture of love. Because Song of Solomon is a beautiful story of Jesus and his bride. Amen. How much Jesus loves his bride. So here we understand from this story that dove is the picture of love. When we go and see the book of Jeremiah, when we go and see the book of Isaiah, we see dove does not condemn. It does not fight. Whenever it sees the trouble it runs away. Dove is not waiting to fight with other birds. It's not waiting to pick up a fight. When it sees fight, it avoids and it runs away from the fight. The Bible also says in Jeremiah, when it sees trouble, it mourns. Meaning, dove does not like contention. Dove does not like fight. Dove does not like arguments. Dove wants to maintain peace. It says in the book of Jeremiah, Dove mounts when it sees trouble. So it's giving the character of Dove that it is very calmly bird. It, it runs away from fight. And when Jesus told can show them in the book of Matthew when Jesus told, Be as shrewd as serpents and as harmless, innocent as doves. In the book of Matthew, when Jesus gave the example, he said, Be as shrewd as serpents, cunning as serpents, wise as serpents, but innocent, harmless as doves. Amen. Harmless as doves. In the book of Matthew, you can read that. So harmless as doves. So when Jesus explained, he said harmless. Why he told harmless? Because dove 
is the picture of not harming not hurting being pure being kind be harmless be innocent as song of solomon says your eyes are innocent like doves so throughout the bible we see whenever there is a picture of dove in the hebrew jewish culture it in the time of noah and the flood it spoke of rest in the time of levitical mosaic law it talks about pure clean bird in the book of jeremiah it talks about dove avoiding trouble having humility and jesus says as innocent as doves now understand when jesus took his baptism in river jordan when john the baptist gave his baptism when jesus came up out of the water the dove came and the holy spirit came in the form of a dove holy spirit came in the form of a dove and sat on jesus do you all remember that story when jesus took his baptism holy spirit came in the form of a dove and sat on him when the jewish people saw the they immediately understood the context they immediately understood the meaning because for them dove represented peace rest in the time of noah and the flood dove represented pure clean bird under mosaic law dove represent symbol of love in the book of song of solomon dove represents no fighting represents peace represents innocence so when the bird came and sat on jesus the holy spirit came in the form of the bird people understood this is the pure innocent sacrifice that the lord has sent for his people and the spirit of god rest on him because he has come to give rest to all those who are heavy laden amen you remember the scripture jesus said all those who are weary and are heavy laden i will give you rest so when the spirit of god came upon him like the form of dove people understood okay he is the one who's going to give rest to his people but the pharisees those who are not willing to understand they were overlooking they were not wanting to know someone who wants to argue someone who do not want to understand will still always find a way so god was giving a very clear picture he is the one i am talking about sabbath rest are you able to relate now one of the greatest law that pharisees always fought for argued for sabbath law to be kept holy what is sabbath law the fourth commandment sabbath law is resting in god now what is resting my dear friend rest is not an inactivity rest is activity in god rest is fully trusting in god rest is having the highest form of faith in jesus rest is knowing that jesus has finished the work for you rest is knowing it is his doing not your doing rest is when you are not troubled in your heart because you know that god has taken care of your past your future and what you are going currently now that is being in rest so when you are in at rest everything will fall in place remember you are his resting partner and you he is your working partner amen as long as you are working you are taking things in your hands 
he cannot work because you have taken it in your hands you have to love him you have to give it to him when you give it to him give your life to jesus give your children to jesus give your marriage to jesus give your finances to jesus give your dreams to jesus give your goals to jesus give it in the hands of jesus when you give it in the hands of jesus you are saying god you are my working partner i choose to rest in your work when you pull it from his hand and say god let me work let us not help god we cannot help god so when we take we are breaking the law the sabbath law sabbath rest are you with me so now when they see the dove the holy spirit descending in the form of dove they understand okay i get it dove is a picture of rest in the time of noah that means in jesus we have rest jesus is our eternal rest he is the sabbath rest that god was talking about because he is the lord of sabbath amen so when you come to jesus you are no longer weary no longer tired it says come to me all those who are weary and burdensome i will give you rest amen so i told holy spirit is in you but when holy spirit comes upon you you can rest very well are you with me are you understanding see christ is in you the day you made jesus your lord holy spirit is already in you now how you can receive holy spirit upon you there are two things holy spirit in you and holy spirit upon you holy spirit upon you is when you yield to the holy spirit when you submit to the holy spirit when you worship what are you doing you're submitting you're yielding when you worship you allow the holy spirit to come upon you i have a scriptural reference the bible says in the book of chronicles when the musician played the music the spirit of the lord came and fell upon the congregation when the musician played the music that is when the worship began the spirit of the lord came upon them so that is why it is so important that you worship that you don't miss your time of worship you worship not only on sunday morning you worship every day at home you speak in tongues at home you praise god so just because we are in new covenant grace covenant finished work your prayers your praises your devotion is not finished i you able to relate the work of jesus is finished but your prayers your praises your devotion your expression of love to god is not finished you do that why you do that you do that in response to what he has done now you don't praise you don't fast for him to bless you for him to heal you you pray you fast you uh, you worship as a response to what jesus has already done it is not starting the game from the f- f- initial start line it is from the finish line are you able to relate that's very important the attitude of worship attitude of prayer so now you are able to understand why it talks about the form of dove why the bible says the form of dove one more uh, reason i'll give you see the bible says a scripture can be interpreted rabbi say the scripture one scripture can be interpreted in 72 ways so uh, the bible scholars bible hebrew rabbis they have many many ways to interpret even the way the context is written in hebrew language that alone can be taken and explained the way the words are written the the it, it has been rephrased the way in a hebrew context the words are written when you see every single letter of the word hebrew has so much of deep meaning when you read one single scripture and you try to understand rafa and rafael just a sing, simple example of rafa rafael when you try to see in hebrew language you will understand okay what is that in hebrew language it is talking of in english it is saying healing but when you see that in hebrew language i told you it can be interpreted in many ways when you see that in hebrew language it says rafa so rafa and when you see the 
text, the text it is written from right to left. When you see the uh, letters of Hebrew, you get another meaning out of it. There is a letter He, letter Phi, grace in the word Rafa. And when you see that in Hebrew language, I have not brought that, I'm just giving it for you to understand how it can be uh, interpreted in many ways. When you see that, when you understand in Hebrew language, you realize when you rest is when you receive Rafa. Are you with me? When you rest is when you receive Rafa. When you see in Hebrew word, the letters that is used for rest and the letters that is used for Rafa is just with one letter it is interchanged. And you are like, okay, a Hebrew scholar understands. When I rest, I receive Rafa. Amen. When you rest in Jesus, you receive your healing. Are you able to relate? So, uh, scripture can be interpreted in many ways. So, let's just take that one way that I am talking about. That one of the way. Why Holy Spirit in the form of dove? In the time of Noah and the flood, it is a picture of peace and rest. In the time of Mosaic law, it is a pure, innocent animal. In the time of Song of Solomon, it's a picture of love. In the time of Jeremiah, it's talking about no fight, no trouble. And the Bible says he is a picture of innocence, being harmless as dove. And the bird dove has nine primary feathers on each side. The Holy Spirit giving you nine gifts of the Holy Spirit to the church and nine fruits of the Holy Spirit to the church and both must work in perfect harmony. If only gifts of the Holy Spirit are there with one wing, the bird goes only in circles. So both the wings, the gifts and the fruits must work in perfect harmony so that the dove can soar higher. The work of the Holy Spirit can soar higher in your life in the church, in the body of Christ. That's where God is bringing the picture of dove everywhere to tell you that work in perfect unity, the gift of the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Now let's see what are those nine primary wings, the nine, nine primary feathers that I talk about, nine primary feathers of the dove. Let's see in the book of 1 Corinthians. I told you Holy Spirit has nine gifts to give you. What are those nine gifts? Show them 1 Corinthians chapter 12. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but the same God. Can you see there are three things mentioned? Same Spirit, same Lord, same God. All three in one. Trinity God works all in all, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the prophet. Why God has given you the uh, gift of Holy Spirit, fruit of Holy Spirit, so that you profit. Now show them the gift of Holy Spirit, the next verse from 8. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit works all things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. Let me explain. Church, this year is the year of acts of the Holy Spirit. God loves to have you the gifts of the Holy Spirit. God wants you to know the gifts of the Holy Spirit. God wants you to use the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are different from the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit are many exhortation, service, leadership, 
mercy, giving, encouraging. There are many gifts of the Holy Spirit. But I told nine primary feathers, that is nine primary gifts of the Holy Spirit are these. Show them the way I have divided them into three by three. These nine gifts of the Holy Spirit are divided in this order. If you see, knowing is word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirit. Through the Holy Spirit, you have word of wisdom. What is word of wisdom? It is beyond human mind. You do not know which college to apply for, which company to go for, what idea you must have to increase your business, like Jacob got the idea to multiply his flock, a divine idea, like Abraham got the divine idea, to have cattle ranch, a divine idea. It's word of wisdom, word of wisdom. Whatever you are doing, the word of wisdom, Holy Spirit will give you. It's a gift. You know what time to operate, what decision to take. Your decision will not match the stats. It will not match the past. It will not match the advisors, but it will be divinely decision from the Holy Spirit word of wisdom. Amen. That is knowing. You will say, I know it and I know it and I know it like I know it. I know I have to do this. That is called word of wisdom. Holy Spirit will give you that word of wisdom. I'm sure you have experienced that. If you, if you, if you have not, you can wait on the Holy Spirit to guide you. I remember in the year 2016 when I had uh, a tragedy in my life. My family members, they were telling me, close down the church because I just started, nothing was happening. I don't know anything much about the word. I have not gone to a Bible college. I don't know the ways of the ministry. They told me you have to close down to the church because I was in such a vulnerable state after the stillborn and so many questions. So the dean of a reputed Bible college from Singapore, he called me saying, I think you should close down the church out of his goodwill, out of his love for us. He told, why don't you come over here, study. Don't do this ministry. Stop all this. Don't do this. You sit and study. You take up job. Focus your life on something more better. When he told me he is a dean of a Bible college, I respect him. And I know he's telling out of love for us. But I wept, I wept, I wept. I was like, no. Everything in the situation, the context that I am going through, the current circumstances, everything is telling me to quit. Everything is telling me to quit. But there is something deep down within my heart is telling me, no, God has called me for this. God does not want me to quit this and run away now when it is such a desperate situation. It was word of wisdom, the word of wisdom that God gave. No, and I had to go against everybody around me. I had to say no, but you know, every argument was favoring their decision. Every logical thinking was favoring their advice. But just the peace from the Holy Spirit told, no, you're not quitting, you're not closing the ministry, you're not closing the church. I'm like, no, I am not listening to you all. I'm not going to do this. And I requested everyone, please give me six more months for me to stabilize my mind, my emotions, because I know there is something that I do not know that is God's love for me. I must understand God's love. Just give me time, six more months to study God's love. I enrolled every possible Bible college, every possible institution, started to dig deeper and deeper courses and courses, studying at least about 9 to 10 hours every day. It was the word of wisdom. Today, everyone looks back and says, that was the wisest decision that you made. And I'm so thankful to God that I did not quit. 
There can be so many times in your life, you may feel like, okay, should I do this? Should I not do this? That is word of wisdom. Word of wisdom. Amen? God gives you, guides you through peace. It can be related to your marriage. It can be related to your marriage. Everybody tells you, you must marry that person. And in your heart, no, I'm not supposed to marry him. Or someone says, you're not supposed to marry him. Everyone, everyone tells you this is the wrong person in your life. <laughs> right? Someone told me, you should, three days before my marriage, a spiritual, the man of God, whom I used to admire the most, three days before marriage came, met me and said, I feel strongly in my heart, you should not marry Anand Abraham. I said, it's too late. Three days for my marriage. What were you doing for past four years? <laughs> now I feel, think about it. How it will be to a person who is getting married. Three days from now, I come to Evangeline and say, you're not supposed to get married. How is that feeling? Can you imagine that it's such a shock and fear and confusion? Who leads you? It is the word of knowledge at that time. The word of knowledge. What was the knowledge? I was like, blessed is the man who trusteth in the Lord. I am getting into this not because I trust a human, not because of anybody's counsel or advice. I am getting into this because I am trusting my God. So you have that word of knowledge. Amen. Word of knowledge. Holy Spirit guides you. Amen. So one of the classic keys in our church when Hilda's sister, when the, the third child was admitted in the hospital, doctors told he has to undergo for another surgery. Critical surgery. Already he has undergone one surgery. And doctors told another critical surgery. All the reports, reports were showing fatal, literally fatal understand between the lines and the doctor said you have to do another surgery it was such a step of faith brother joel and sister hilda took they got the word of knowledge they saw beyond the physician they saw beyond the doctor they saw that all the water the pus has come out of the lungs and we are not doing another incision for the three-year-old baby we are going ahead knowing that our God is the healer. So they got the word of knowledge that no, it is recovering, that doctors are not seeing, we are able to see that. And they took step of faith, they went against the doctors and discharged him. And he's seated there in the second row. <laughs> that is word of knowledge. So God, that's the knowing, knowing beyond any scholar or any experienced individual. Discerning of the spirits, discerning of the spirits is, you know in your spirit, well, it's not just like knowing right and wrong. It is discerning of the spirits. You know it is from the Holy Spirit, or you know it is from the evil spirit. You can sense it. So when that lady, uh, when Paul was preaching, she was going on saying, they are the people of God. Listen to him. Listen to him. She was annoying and nagging. Paul knew discerning of the Spirit. He knew she is not from the Holy Spirit. But what is she saying? They are from the Lord. Listen to them. Her words are right. Her statement is right. But Paul says, she is not from the Holy Spirit. Discerning of the spirits. So when you meet someone, their language may be correct, their vocabulary is right, the context is right, but you know deep down something is wrong. Discerning of the spirit. This, that is the gift of knowing. So I'm not going more deep, uh, just uh, briefly. Let's move on to the next gift, the gift of spirit. Speaking. These are the gifts that the Holy Spirit has given. Gift of speaking, gift of prophecy. So God has ordained prophets. They know the future they, through the eyes of God. They can tell you. It's only the Holy Spirit. It's not human mind. The Holy Spirit can tell you the gift of prophecy, which you cannot just keep it to yourself. You have to speak. It's gift of speaking. The other one is gift of speaking in tongues. No, don't raise your hands. How many of you do not speak in tongues this year? is the acts of the Holy Spirit. This is a gift. You have to desire this gift. 
gift of speaking in tongues. Gift of speaking in tongues is a very powerful gift. You're speaking the language of God. You're speaking the mysteries of God. The Bible says you do not know everything about God. You do not know everything about your future. You do not know everything about a subject. Holy Spirit who knows all things will guide you into all truth. He will speak through you. Speaking of tongues. He speaks mysteries to you through you speaking of tongues next is interpretation of tongues if those of you who speak in tongues today in the church ask the gift of interpretation of tongues you can ask the gift of interpretation you can say when you speak in tongues you don't know what you have said and then you can say god can you please explain to me what you just spoke holy spirit can you explain to me what you just spoke holy spirit can you explain to me what i just heard you can ask for the gift of interpretation of tongues because when someone is speaking in tongues you stand up and you say what you reveal, nobody knows. The person who has spoken, the person who is speaking, it is for someone else. It is such a powerful gift. When an unbeliever sees that gift, he is like, definitely there is God here. There is something supernatural power which I do not understand. There is God here. And he is drawn towards the congregation. He is drawn towards the house of God. Amen. Gift of interpretation of times. Next gift. Gift of doing. What is the gift of doing? The three gifts. Gifts of healings. It is plural. It's not singular. It's gifts of healing. Working of miracles. Faith for miracles. It's gifts of healing. It's not gift of healing. Singular. It's gifts of healing. That means every one of you have got this gift. Every one of you have got this gift. That's why the Bible says, Thou shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover. It may be you have got two gifts. Someone has four gifts. Someone has 14 gifts. It is gifts. But you have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So that's why God told, go lay hands on the sick. The Bible does not say, pastor has to lay hands on the sick. Evangelist has to lay hand on the sick. God says, you lay hand on the sick and they shall recover. So when you lay hand on the sick, lay hand on your child, lay hand on your body, lay hand, the gifts of healing operates. Amen. Gifts of healing operates. And gifts of healing operates even through working of miracles. Imagine the congregation is here. You don't have to step down and lay hands on everyone. You can speak the word of prophecy. You can speak in tongues and the working of miracles happens. As I'm speaking to you, as you're listening to God's word on gifts of healing, you know what? The truth, the revelation of the mystery of God is entering your ears, it's entering your heart, it's entering your DNA, and you know you're getting revived. You are receiving divine strength in your physical body. That's why by hearing, you are resting. By resting, you are receiving the healing. Amen. So, working of miracles. The next one is faith for miracles. Faith for miracles. We all have the faith, the gift of God. Romans 12, 3. The measure of faith. We have the faith of the Son of God. There's no doubt about it. But some have faith for miracles. You, you can see when some uh, healing uh, ministers come, the moment they raise their hand, the whole congregation falls because they have got the gift of Faith for miracles. Faith for miracles. You can ask for any of these gifts when you know the truth. You want a gift for faith for miracles, working for miracles, interpretation of tongues, speaking in tongues, prophecy, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of the spirits. Nine primary gifts of the Holy Spirit. And let me tell you, some of you seated here, you already have any one of these gifts in you. You might have still not realized. I have come to bring all things to remembrance. That's what Holy Spirit wants to remind you. Have you seen whenever your father, your uncle, a special person in your life, when they come and meet you, your mom, your aunt, when they meet you after a long time, what they do? They always come with gifts. When you go to a function, you go to a party, you go to a place where you are invited, you never go empty-handed. You always go with gifts. You being human, know to give good gifts to others. How much more your father in heaven, whenever your father in heaven visits you, 
he never comes empty handed he comes with gifts holy spirit comes with gifts he has given you this gifts this is the truth you still do not know what are those gifts the gifts of healing is in you the gift of interpretation of tongues is in you gift of faith for miracles is in you you have to know what are they you have to know what is it that god has given he has given you you he has given you the moment you embrace your calling you are able to operate in that gift better you are able to operate in that gift better are you with me you might be thinking pastor i don't have that gift god has given that gift for somebody else no how can god be a unjust god he is a just god there is no favoritism with him he cannot give one gift to one person and say i have got nothing for you he has given every one of you gift gift of singing gift of teaching gift of speaking prophecy gift of discerning he has given every one of you gifts gift of encouragement gift of leadership gift of mercy gift of giving give a gift of exhortation god has given every one of us the gifts so you must ask the holy spirit holy spirit can you reveal me what is my gift holy spirit will reveal you what is your gift when you know your gift you are a blessing to your family to your community to your church to your friends to everyone who comes in contact with you amen that is what holy spirit wants to do through you holy spirit wants to touch holy spirit needs fingers hands holy spirit needs a body holy spirit needs vocal cords it's a spirit of god it is not having a body so holy spirit needs a body so holy spirit can work in and through you and touch people around you so that he can bless them through you amen so use this gifts and show the demonstration of the working of the holy spirit in your life in your family in your community now let's move on to the last topic that is the fruit of the holy spirit now uh, fruit of the holy spirit at the other prim- uh, nine primary wings the other side that is what are the fruit the fruit of the holy spirit is love joy peace suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance nine fruits of the holy spirit you can show them love joy peace is personal fruit that is for you when uh, who has uh, who has shared abroad the love in your heart romans 55 the love has been shared abroad in your heart by god through holy spirit amen so love joy peace is personal for you relational with others long suffering with others having long suffering you remember the message i took the bible says what's the what's the hebrew meaning for long suffering the one who has long nose in hebrew it says god has in hebrew if somebody has to talk to this is in greek if somebody has to talk to in greek it says god has long nose according to hebrew context the one who has long nose will uh, have uh, be slow to anger the bible says in uh, old testament god is slow to anger hebrew people you know how they will talk the context in that scripture is god has long nose <laughs> the one who has long nose that means he's slow to anger and the fruit of the holy spirit is long suffering long suffering that means slow to anger putting up with things putting up when someone is troubling you for a long long time yeah long suffering kindness goodness that is relations relational to others go to the next one relational to god faithfulness gentleness self control this is between you and god self control in uh, kjv it says temperance it is more than self control the word temperance is it is not just sound mind it's not just self control it's more than that your your entire emotion your will uh, uh, everything your conscience everything is under control and submission to god it is humanly not possible it has to be the work of the holy spirit now let me explain gift of the holy spirit holy spirit comes and gives to all of us but the fruit of the holy spirit holy spirit does not give fruit of the holy spirit is in you you have to develop the fruit of the holy spirit gift of the holy spirit he gives you fruit of the holy spirit is in you now let me explain the bible says in the book of john show them the verse jesus said i am the wine and you are the branches right you are the branches now you are the branches 
so the fr- you, you you are the branch that means the branch has the fruit of the holy spirit the branch must produce the fruit so when you know you are the branch you will be able to produce fruit let me reiterate once you finish the uh, uh, verse abide in me and i in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide in me i am the vine you are the branches he who abides in me and i in him bears much fruit for without me you can do nothing understand the bible says you must bear much fruit every one of you want to bear much fruit you want to bear much fruit in your company bear much fruit in your career you want to bear much fruit in your business you want to do exploits you want to increase you want to have abundance every one of us want to bear much fruit in our ministry what is the secret how do you bear much fruit it says you must know what is that you must know Jesus said I am the vine you are the branches he said you must know you are you are the branches when you know you are the branch of the vine you are his very own you are his part when you know you are the branch when you know you are loved when you know you are part of god when you know you are god kind when you know you are rooted in christ because you are the branch when you know this truth that you are the branch then you will bear much fruit amen so you will be able to produce the fruit of the holy spirit how the one who loves much loves much the one who's loved much loves much the one who's forgiven much when i know i'm forgiven much what will you do you will forgive much the one who's full of joy knowing how much god loves you spread smile and joy to everyone the one who knows what jesus has done on the cross of calvary you have so much of peace you are living in peace with everyone around are you able to relate you must know you are the branch this is very powerful truth dear people why god wants you to come sunday after sunday so that you know you are the branch you must know that you are loved by the father when you know the truth that you are loved by father you have no fear and what will you do you will produce fruit you will produce all the nine fruit of the holy spirit it becomes easy for you to be gentle kind hospitable loving long suffering full of peace full of joy full of love you can do that only when you know you are loved someone who who does not know they are loved they are always irritated they are always comparing they are always jealous they are insecure why because they don't know that they are the branch they don't know that they are loved by the father i am the vine you are the branch are you able to understand you are the branch when you know you are the branch the one who abides in me and my word abides in you it becomes easy to abide in him when you know you are the branch it becomes that means when you know how much god loves you it becomes easy for you to abide in him otherwise it's so boring to abide it's so boring to read the word it's so boring because the law oh they have given me a law to read every day no when you know i am the branch i am the branch of jesus god loves me then i want to know more about me so let me read the bible are you able to relate church so one more thing i want to say because there's so much to say i don't want to miss out uh, the context in the in the old testament high priests used to wear garments right i have explained you on the 12 precious stones oinix on the shoulders the blue linen that he wears on the high priest garments the down of the hem of the garment had what golden bell show them the book of exodus golden bell and pomegranate fruit why i am going to old testament let me end with this bells and pomegranates and upon its hem you shall make pomegranates of blue purple scarlet the colors of the veil of the tabernacle blue purple scarlet everything has meaning blue the color of the sun purple the color of royalty scarlet crimson color of sin work of jesus pomegranate of blue purple and scarlet all around its hem and bells of gold between them all around 
So what is this the Bible is talking about? The, in high priest garment, the hem of the garment had golden bells and the pomegranate. And the pomegranate was in the colors of blue, purple and scarlet. Blue is the color of divinity. Purple is the color of royalty. He is king of kings. Scarlet is the color of sin. He took all the sins of the world. It is the work of Jesus colors that are mentioned in the moving tabernacle. Now the high priest has this pomegranate hanging at the hem of his garment and next to them are golden bells. A bell, a fruit. A bell, a fruit. What is it? Gift of the Holy Spirit, fruit of the Holy Spirit. Gift of the Holy Spirit, fruit of the Holy Spirit. Both of them working in harmony. Every time the high priest would go in to the presence of the Lord in the Old Testament when he enters the most holy place, when God hears the sound of the bell, it is the sound of his good news, glad tidings. The blessed are the feet of those who bring good news. That is where it is under the hem. So when the high priest goes, it is such a pleasing sound to God the Father that, okay, I hear the gift of the Holy Spirit operating to tell the good news and fruit of the Holy Spirit. How can you have the fruit of the Holy Spirit? Unless you have drank the wine, holy uh, pomegranate juice, the red color. It is talking about the Holy Communion. When you commune with Jesus, you become like Jesus and you are able to produce fruit. My dear friend, gospel is not preached. Gospel is first lived. When they see you living, then they hear you preaching. Amen? That is when, together in harmony, we are able to do the will of God here on earth. Amen. The Lord has blessed you. The Lord has lifted his countenance upon you. The Lord is gracious to you. You shall always be the head and not the tail. You shall always be above and never below. You shall lend and shall never borrow. Whatsoever your hand does, it shall prosper. Your children are mighty in the land. No Jericho wall, no giant, no Red Sea will ever stand before you because you have entered the promised land. You have entered the Sabbath rest in Jesus because you are in the ark. You are in the rest because Christ is in you. You are becoming stronger younger, healthier, and more beautiful for the glory of the Lord, the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit is always with us now and forevermore. Amen. Shalom. Christ is in you. You can be a blessing by partnering with Priya Abraham Ministries to share this good news. To partner, visit priyaabraham.org slash part.